From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Tuesday, February 1st, 2022. Your GPU knows your secrets. Researchers from Ben Gurion University and the University of Lille published a paper demonstrating a new GPU fingerprinting method called Drawn Apart. This can create a reliable and robust device signature using variations in speed from multiple execution units in a GPU, looking at the time to render graphics primitives using the WebGL API. This is based on manufacturing differences in identical GPUs, so unlike typical browser-based fingerprinting, it would distinguish machines with identical hardware and software configurations. Using a top-end fingerprinting linking algorithm, Drawn Apart extended median tracking times compared to browser-based solutions from 17 and a half days to 28 days. UPnP behind Eternal Silence router campaign. The connectivity protocol Universal Plug and Play is at fault for another malware campaign dubbed Eternal Silence. Researchers at Akamai spotted attackers using a UPN proxy vulnerability to create malicious proxies on over 45,000 routers. This opens the door to installing crypto miners or launching further wormable attacks against a network. The researchers warned that eternal silence gets around networking segmentation and can generally only be seen by scanning endpoints and auditing NAT tables. Infected routers also need to reset or be flashed to get back to normal. DeFi platform hacked for $80 million. In an incident report, Qubit Finance disclosed that malicious actors exploited a security flaw within the smart contract code of the company's blockchain, letting the attackers not deposit anything but withdraw the equivalent of $80 million in Binance coin. Qubit usually acts as a settlement processing provider between various blockchain providers, letting people withdraw a different cryptocurrency than they deposited. The company is now offering the hackers a $250,000 bug bounty to encourage them to return the funds. The top three industries for ransomware. According to data gathered by the threat intelligence firm Trellix, between July and September 2021, the banking, utilities, and retail industries were the most targeted by ransomware organizations. These three sectors accounted for 58% of all observed attacks. The report found that ransomware gangs have adopted methods over time to target the most sensitive data and services, noting that education, government, and industrial services remain prominent targets as well. It should be noted that many of the groups behind major ransomware attacks during the time looked at in this study have either disappeared or gone dark, with new organizations emerging to fill the void. And now, a word from our sponsor, Pantera. To understand the exploitable attack service, take the adversarial perspective. The way to know which vulnerabilities are exploitable is to, well, exploit them. This way, security teams get a concise attack vector pointing to the organization's weakest link. From here, remediation requests handed to IT are focused, manageable, and based on true business impact. Find out more at Pantera.io. Apple opens the door for unlisted apps. The company now allows developers to publish unlisted apps in the App Store. These can be shared with private links and will not appear in search. This isn't meant to be a replacement for the company's test flight beta system, and there is no invite-only mechanism for unlisted apps. It's seen more as being used for apps required internally by organizations that don't necessarily need to be searched for by the public. Developers can request to move published apps to unlisted, although all old links to them will still work. Messenger hit with prize phishing campaign. Finland's National Cybersecurity Center issued a warning about a new campaign currently active in the country. Targeted victims receive a message claiming to be from a friend asking for a phone number under the pretext it's to enter them into a prize drawing. This drawing will send an SMS code to their phone, which the friend asks for. This is used to log into the victim's Facebook account, change their password and email. From there, the scammers reach out to other people in the victim's network. The agency warned it appears the scammers have recently gotten more ambitious, asking for credit card and banking information to transfer supposed prize money. Meta suspends registration for analytics tool. Meta paused new users from joining its CrowdTangle social media tracking tool, although new users can still be added to existing company accounts. The tool can be used to analyze public content available on Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit. Meta disbanded the CrowdTangle team last year, moving the tool under its new data and transparency team. The company said user registrations were suspended due to staff shortages caused by that reorganization. No word on how long registrations will be paused. Grindr disappears from Chinese app stores. The iOS app store and Android app marketplaces operated by Tencent and Huawei no longer list the dating app Grindr in China. 
App researchers at Keymind noted the iOS version was removed on January 27th. It's unclear when Android apps were removed. 9to5Mac sources say that the iOS app was removed by Grindr's parent company's request. Grindr users in China reported issue with the app over the past several weeks, often unable to send or receive messages or add likes. Competitive LGBTQ dating apps remain available in the country. Grindr was sold by the Chinese video game development company Kunlun Tech to a group of U.S.-based investors back in March 2020. Ahead of the Winter Olympics, the Cyberspace Administration of China announced a month-long crackdown on online rumors, pornography, and illegal content. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Cybersecurity Headlines. If you enjoyed the show, you owe it to yourself to check out some of the other great podcasts available from the CISO series, like the CISO Security Vendor Relationship Podcast. This week's episode is entitled, Why Ignoring Most of Your Vulnerabilities is the Best Strategy, and digs into what factors should determine when to conduct vulnerability scans. Should it be on a set schedule, or should compliance, change in environment, or emerging threats play a factor? Now look at potential advantages to each approach. Be sure to look for it in your podcast app of choice, or just head on over to CISOseries.com. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines. 